guys are looking in the screen right there. Okay. Put over. Squishy, squishy. Mm. Hey everybody, I'm with my friend Mercy and Charlotte. We're doing a Nigel's haul for you today. So uh, mm. I helped my friends get some of their first makeup brushes on this side and then just some um, different kinds of brushes to help specific applications. So we're going to go over our entire haul and talk about some of the things. So she, need, she needed makeup brushes. She had <laughs> barely anything. So we decided to invest in a full Delium kit and just as an entry level and it comes with, we'll show you. Oh my gosh, are you so yeah. excited for your first Super kit? Excited. So this is the Studio Series 10 piece what? mineral yes. brush. Yeah, it comes with a bag. Oh look, latte yeah. things that there's food inside. We're going to have Charlotte open. So what is, what is he it's got there? It's a Makeup Forever Step One. Oh, okay. This is a Beating, I'm getting beat up over here. Retinous Correcting Primer. Yeah, so this is a tinted green primer. It's a color correcting primer. I really like the Ooh, Step One. Nice. And um, we decided to get that for Charlotte to cancel out some of the redness in her face uh, before we apply foundation. Oh wow, that's really nice. Oh, I like the canvas on the yes, inside. I did yes. not know that. Yeah, so wow. check this out. That uh, canvas color is really cool and it's a uh, vegan leather. Yeah. What? It's a faux leather. But I yeah, let's go over your brushes. That. For Charlotte, a ton of brushes. <laughs> we really wanted to focus on the eyes. And so we got a range of different kinds of brushes to to help her achieve the looks that she wants. Um, and so while she's opening up her brushes, I'm going to be um, testing out this uh, primer on her. So my hands are sanitized and I'm going to just open that up and take just a little bit on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to put it on one side of her face so you can see. It's so soft. Brush. Yeah, makeup forever. So she's already wearing makeup right now and I'm putting it on and letting it sit on the skin. And sometimes when you use, use this product on some skin types, it looks, it cancels it out immediately. Other times you need to layer in um, a little bit other products. I think I do see an improvement, um, but it's not stark, but this is where every little bit that you do to correct and layer is going to help the final application. Okay. So Mercy, what do you mm -hmm. got? It matches my outfit. I know, so read it, open the brush up, read the number and I'll tell you what it is and what it's for. It says, it's 9.55. This is going to be a duet, duet fiber finishing, dual fiber brush. So this is dual fiber because there's natural, natural bristles down here and then there's synthetic here. So if you imagine there's some hair here and then there's some synthetic here and so you have the density lower, so you can use that top layer to kind of have an airbrush effect. What you can use wow. this for is cream products. I like to use these for blush. You take the cream color and then you can kind of stipple or do like a diffused effect, but you can also use this for your foundation if you'd like a lighter coverage. So let's say you have a full coverage foundation and you want to, um, not use as much as not as a heavy look you can also use this brush the key is that you don't want to push down because mm -hmm. then you're getting into it you want to leave it on the surface another great thing you can use on this brush is to use finishing powder so once you do your loose powder with a powder puff or like a you know a thicker a bigger fluffier brush like this then you could take a finishing powder or a light dusting of that powder and just go all over the face very lightly and kind of get a nice even finish to give you that flawless finish at the end. Um, since we have a lot to cover, we'll just have Mercy and Charlotte refer back to this video on my channel to be able to get their um, get their intro again. This is 957. So 957 is a precision kabuki and it is it is dense, but it's not as dense as it's not as dense as let's say a Sigma flat kabuki so there is some movement here you can use this for cream products so this is going to be your foundation brush put foundation on the back of your hand or I wouldn't suggest like putting it directly on the brush but back of your hand taking a little bit is okay. you're going to blend that into the skin there's so many different usage of that so 
Now, since it's flat, you really want to use this against your skin, but you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to be dragging your skin, which is going to speed up aging. But you also want to preserve the shape of your brushes. But you can use a little bit of pressure, um, but when you are using this for powder products, you definitely want to use light pressure because let's say you put a foundation on it, you clean the brush and then you come back to it. If you put powder and you go swiping like this on your skin, you're going to be dragging that cream product that you had underneath. Um, you can use this. It's going to pick up more than this finishing brush, but you can kind of uh, work it over. So I like to think of brushes as multitasking. So if you were stuck with one brush or you, your other brushes are dirty, or let's say you only have one brush, you can use your brushes to do other things, but ideally every brush is made for a specific purpose. I also wanna show you the difference in diameter. So this is going to be the 955 and 957. So compare those right there. This is 964. So 964 is an all-purpose blusher. You can also use this for powder, dusting your face. Um, you can also use this for bronzer, highlighter, but primarily it is going to be for blusher or blush, as we like to say. What you want to do is take it, into, take it into the powder product, tap off the excess, and then there's different ways you can hold the brush. You never want to hold this brush like that against the face. You don't want to hold it like that. It's very stiff. It's um, it's it's going to be not as comfortable. You want to do it at an angle, or you can mm -hmm. even pat it. I you're see. taking that brush col blush color, especially if it's a high pigment color. You're gonna take that and lightly go on the apples of the cheeks, and then diffuse it out up into your cheekbone. Because when you blush, it kind of diffuses out. Sometimes when you do blush, you're gonna go across the nose. Sometimes people like to take whoop. People like to take bronzer on the sides, so see how I'm kind of laying it, and then you can start in an angle and flatten it out. You can um, use this when you are dipping into powder, let's say, um, if you want a little bit more or if you want more targeted. Instead of taking this and putting powder all over the face, you can pat it. So let's say we want coverage here coverage here, then you can use a padding motion for oh, this brush. 945. So this is a contour brush. It's a little bit dense. It's small, so it can get like right in here. Uh, it's uh, thin enough where you can go along the hairline, and then you can also use it. If you want that dense highlighter, you can also go here. I recommend this brush for powder products, but if you want to, you can also use it with cream. This is going to be great for contouring and mm. also bronzing. This is going to be to create sculpture in the face. So that's going to be in the cheekbones, along the jawline, maybe around the nose, around the forehead. If your forehead is really small, do not contour up here because that's just going to close up your face. Contouring is not one size fits all. You want to do it with complements your face and brings out your best features and pushes back some of the features that you don't like. Next, this one, 942. So 942 is the slanted contour. Let's compare these oh. two real quick. This is going to be a little bit bigger. I would liken this to a slightly smaller um, slanted blush brush. The angle is a little bit uh, tighter so it can get right into the contours of the face. You can use this for blush, especially if you like to do more of an angled look instead of a big wash. Uh, you can also use this for highlighter. You can also use this to highlight down the nose. So this is a, a really great, you can even use this for powder, but the primary function of this is to contour. But again, this can be used in so many different ways. I have 769. 769, I believe, is going to be the angled contour and... Charlotte also got this. The reason why I recommended this, this is a really big, like it's kind of dense, but it has an angle here. So when you are going into the, open your eyes, when you're going into the contours of the eyes, okay. that point is going right into the socket or along the crease line to give you that definition, not quite a cut crease, but then it's diffusing that color. So if you use a light hand and light product, it'll actually do the work for you. And then you can also, take off the excess and then go up and um, and diffuse that color out. Now the reason why I got this one for Charlotte mm -hmm. is because she has got this big brush for her for powder, contouring, and bronzing. But this is kind of hard to do in the smaller parts of the face like your nose bridge, for example. So we're taking this, which is made for the eye, and then going into her 
face. What you can do, little tip, is if you don't have a small brush, you can clean off this brush if you're using contour in it and dip that corner into a highlight shade, especially a little shimmer. You can put, do your cupid's bow. You can go into the inner corners of the eye. You can also take this flat side and then use a highlight color or a light shadow to do that highlight on the nose. Um, you can also use this to clean up the sides of the eyes if you'd like. But again, this angled contour is primarily going to be for your eyes. For our petite Asian eyes, this is going to be better to do a light wash of color instead of a dark contouring color. It's also going to be best to use it on other parts of the face. It is going to be a little bit more dense compared to, let's say, like a highlight brush like this that's angled. Oh my gosh, this brush is so soft. I also want to point out, Delium is very cost effective. It's used by professional makeup artists, even celebrity makeup artists, JLo's makeup artist, shout out to uh, Scott Barnes. He uses Delium brushes, so they are definitely used very well, but some of the brush quality is not gonna be as soft as your natural brushes, your higher end brushes. So keep that in mind. Brushes like these, synthetic brushes, definitely going, uh, going with these if this feels very soft, you know, this does the job, uh, but I think with some of the eye brushes or, or if you're doing things sculpting the face and you feel like the brush is just not soft enough, then that's probably where you want to go up to the Mastro line or the blue triangle line. So Delium has different tiers of quality, or you can go into one of your favorite luxury lines to get to get a different brush. I really wanted to start with the basic brushes and then kind of go from there. 781. 781 is a bullet brush and I actually have I actually have 781 here too. So unfortunately, these are one of the brushes that I feel like are are not cut very well, so it's not that soft, it's not that smooth. So my solution for this is Sometimes bullet brushes are used for blending. This is much too dense and stiff and kind of just um, not as soft for it. It'd be great for, great for placing color in the outer corner. You also maybe want to use this brush using the tip and then putting color, like let's say instead of laying it perpendicularly to the side and doing a wash in the middle like a windshield wiper motion, or you can use it to put in um, inner corner highlight. So there's definitely a lot of uses for this. Because this is so dense, you can you can use these in cream products. It's not necessarily made for that, but like let's say you wanted to put foundation or concealer around the nose mm. or in the eye area. Ah, we should actually test that out the next time we're doing makeup to see how we like to use this brush in other ways than smudging, okay. especially because it's larger. I actually want to talk about this brush here, 755. So with Mercy's Petite Crease, her eyes, like this brush is gonna be much better than the bullet brush for smudging and also placing darker color. So this brush, you can go you can go right underneath. You have like cream eyeliner, you can smudge that brush. Okay. You can also take this if you needed to do a lip brush or, or do a cupid's bow. 755 is a smudge brush. So smudging, you want to smudge creamy products. You can also smudge uh, powder products as well, but um, smudging is really used to diffuse out darker colors to light. So building that depth and definition. This is a 765. 765 is a small angled shader. So this one is going to be for the eye. Again, you can probably use this on the face if you'd like. You can use it for so many different things. What I would do is like I would take a cream shadow base that's a shimmer close and then I can go right in here. So there's a lot of different ways you could hold the brush. If you hold it this way against the crease, that point, just like the angled contour brush, you can go right in here and do a little bit of shading. Or what I like to do is turn it on its side and go upward or like some people like to go back and forth like windshield wipers. This shading brush is going to be shading, meaning you don't want to just place dense color. Shading means that you want to create shades of color. So taking it from dark to light. Oh. 776. 776 is a blending brush. So this is very similar to, it's kind of similar to the bullet brush, but it's more open. This is, this feels like it's synthetic. It doesn't feel like natural hair. So this is going to be great for cream products. A blending brush, again, you can go in here, you can place color by laying it on its side like this. Instead of like this way, you place it on the side to do a swash of color. And then by blending, you want to blend out those outer edges and diffuse upwards. 
Uh, because of the texture of this brush, you can also take this on cream products on the face, such as diffusing out that concealer line. You can also use it to highlight the bridge of the nose. Mm. This is really a great way because what we've seen here from blending for Mercy is that you have only these three brushes. Now this is yeah. a full face kit. Delium does have an eye dedicated kit, but Mercy really needed the basics. So for eyes, she only has these. So she may find that she needs more. And so we're gonna see that more in what Charlotte got. Oh, one last thing is what's missing here is a spoolie and I've been really uh, getting on Mercy to do her brows more and uh, she made her first Anastasia purchase last month. So what we just got is the spoolie, it's for, it says lash, but really it's going to be for your brows to comb them up, mm. to take out excess color, to blend color, to help shape them, keep them in place. So I love this. Everyone needs a spoolie in their life. Okay, thank you. Yep. Some other things that we got that I got for both of the girls is the original London Brush Company, which Sean Richards has rebranded as Sean Richards Company? Beauty? Cosmetics? I don't know. This is a goat milk shampoo, and it's just a soap. And then you mix in water and you uh, swirl the brushes in. If you want to know how to shampoo your brushes, you can go to London Brush Company's YouTube channel and see that. This is so great. Smells like lavender. Mm. Literally smells like fresh dried lavender. I love lavender. So this is great for deep cleaning your brushes. You should do it minimum once a month. Okay. Sometimes once, once a week. A on a daily basis or at least weekly basis, this is your spray. You're going to spray it on the brush or spray it on a paper towel or a microfiber cloth and then take it. Perian Spirit, I love this. There's uh, citrus oils in here. It smells so good. It's very effective. I prefer this for more of the dry brush, uh, dry cleaning. I know that um, this company does say you can soak your brushes in the solution to clean it, but I don't recommend that. Uh, and these chemicals can be harsh, especially on higher end brushes. So this is going to be for your quick switch, switch ups and more of your daily maintenance. And then when your brushes get really grimy or before they get grimy, you're gonna wanna use this. Okay, we're gonna do a tea break and come right back. Tea time, tea time. And cake time. Yeah, enjoy my good boy. <laughs> so, so good, good. we're back from break. Okay, we're gonna go over Charlotte's brushes now. What do we got? We also have this brush. Oh, so Charlotte and I both got the 9.4 Delium. This is the tapered contour brush. For contouring, you can do that. But I actually got this for powder. So you wanna dip it into your loose powder. And then rather than using a big fluffy brush, you just go right into the areas you can, you can pat, you can roll, press and roll. Get right underneath the eyes. You can go around the corners of the mouth. So that's why this like tapered shape, this pointed shape is really nice because you can get into smaller areas of the face. You can also use this for bronzing and contouring. It is more pointed, so it's going to concentrate more color, which is a good thing for bronzer. Maybe not so much because bronzer, you want to wash a color, but for contouring, you really want to make some nice sharp lines, but then you do want to make sure you use this light hand and then blend as well. But I mainly got this for powder. Oh, um, <laughs> so we did get a lot of Delium brushes, but I did want to show you this Delium <laughs> brush roll that came with Mercy's kit, the 10 piece. What's great about this is, open it up for me. So she already stored all of her brushes and it's two tier. But this is the innovative part that I didn't know. So inside here are pockets. Inside here you can even fit a business card. And there, these pockets are great for sticking in like Q-tips, sponge wedges, powder puffs, uh, an extra $5 bill. I think that this brush is really, uh, this roll is really well made and and it's really functional. So uh, there's all these extra spots in here for Mercy to get more brushes. <laughs> okay. We also have this beautiful brush. So we have this uh, fan highlighter from Eve Pearl. I believe it's dual sided because Charlotte really likes to travel with her brushes and so the less space it takes up better. Uh, I personally don't like them because she's gonna keep it in a bag like this, <laughs> but I like to keep my brush in cups so I don't wanna smash one end or the other. Highlighter, so these are synthetic. So this is gonna be for 
cream products, but because they're synthetic, for powder products, it's going to pick up less. So what I like about these is there's so many different ways that you can use the small brush for highlighting. So you want to go into the tops of the cheekbones, down the bridge of the nose, over the cupid's bow, on the chin. The fan brush, there's a lot of different usages for this. So this you want to use loose pigments. You can also use um, highlighter. So you're going to go along the cheek like this. Ooh. What's great is like let's say you have loose shimmer you can also use that as a highlighter but put a very light amount you're going to dust off the excess and what I like to do is if I want I want highlighter but I want it to look truly dewy I want to use a very small amount and undetectable you can also use this let's say you get fallout uh, of eyeshadow or you have an eyelash and instead of taking your finger and grabbing it and dragging the makeup <laughs> or, or scratching you could then take this brush and just lightly dust it off you can also dust off excess powder so if you like to bake you can bake under the eye and then dust it off you can also use this to dip into loose powder and then if you want to lightly dust over certain places you could do that so there's a lot of different usages for it you can probably search on YouTube and Google all the different usages for fan brushes but I think this is very versatile and it's very gentle and this brush is actually pretty soft so I, I really like that there's different sides because then actually you can also use this for blush mm -hmm. you could also use this uh, for contouring because you can do it this way instead of this way and you can cut into the shape like that so you can also use it for your cheeks so that is the Eve Pearl double-sided fan highlighter brush. Oh, I love me some makeup forever. This is the <laughs> dual-sided 158, and this is called Wavy, and this is called Straight and Wavy. It feels like natural fibers. I'm gonna double check to see if it's synthetic, but it feels like natural brush hairs, and it's super soft. It's one of the softest brushes we have on the table. And I got this for uh, Charlotte for contouring, and I got her something that's going to be big larger and diffuse and fluffy not super compacted so that it can be a little bit more forgiving when she does product again you want to use this for contouring uh, powders you can use it for creams but mainly this is going to be for powder and you can also use this for bronzing so I would use this side for more of a sculpting and this side for more overall adding dimension and and, and color um, you can also use this for blush so you can use this side on your cheek Rather than going like this, you can go in sideways like this, but I really like this uh, thinner angled one. This is really gonna be good for going into the cheek and along the jawline. If you pinch your brush with your hands like this, you can also do the sides of your nose and then cur uh, hugs the curves to do the hairline. I think this is a great multi-purpose brush. Oh, it's so soft. It feels really feel good in the face. <laughs> Did you feel it? Not yet. Oh. We actually missed the whole part about your eye makeup. Okay, oh. so. Charlotte likes to watch Asian makeup videos and Asian makeup is a little bit different. I was East Asian mm -hmm. makeup is a little bit different than um, Western makeup because Asian makeup tends to concentrate on the lash line and diffuse color upward. Also, maybe there's some dark concentrated on the outer corners, but it tends to again focus more on the lash line and uh, framing the eye rather than going deep into the crease. One of the reasons is because we tend to have monolids or um, very petite eyelids. All of us have very petite eyelids. Some of you would call it hooded, where it's hidden, if you, <laughs> but it's not, it's not hooded. We, we were born with this. It's, uh, it's a recessive or a not pronounced crease. So um, mm. our lash line to crease is shorter than relatively to other larger eye sizes. And our eyes are more almond shaped instead of round. We wanted to get very petite, smaller brushes in order to achieve some of the looks that Charlotte likes. And also, even if we want, she wants to do some of the looks that we do see on YouTube that's very popular, to be able to adjust the technique with smaller brushes. So, Delium 780, what this is gonna do is go right into, if she does wanna go along and then above the crease, then going into the socket like this. She wants to do that. And then this can also be used to connect contour along the sides of the nose. I wouldn't call this a precision brush for our eye sizes. Next, we have 780, a smaller bullet brush. And I actually wanna show you the 718 tiny pencil. Wow, is this pencil <laughs> tiny? It's almost as small as a smudger brush and it, it is petite. So let me show you the differences. This is going to be 783 on this side, 780, and then 718, the tiny pencil. Man, this tiny pencil 
This is, this is for precision. Now, the tiny pencil, let's talk about this first because it's so itty bitty. This one is mainly going to be for the eyes, but this is going to be great for smudging. So under eye color, look up. You want to smudge eyeliner. You can also take this to highlight inner corner. You can also, you might even be able to do this and do, um, you want to smudge eyeliner on top. You want to take dark color, so close your eyes, and then you can almost tight line. So instead of pointing it, you want to turn it sideways. You can get really dig into that lash line. It's going to be kind of a thicker and smudgier look. Um, you can take this tiny thing and really carve out. You might even be able to use this to line the lips because it's so pointed. You can also use this for spot concealing. So let's say there's a blemish, you can just go right into it. I mean, this one is so tiny, it might not even work for some of your larger pimples. It's gonna be for your like, <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny stuff, yeah. Uh, so I think this is gonna be a cool brush for you to um, experiment with. Then we go up in size to the 780. This is going to be the pencil. and. They say that it's for precise shading on the eyes, blending eyeliner into eyeshadow. This is a mix of natural and synthetic fibers. For me, I feel like it's too dense to go into the crease, so this is gonna be great for that outer V or the outer corner. If you have dark color that's going from the lash line into the outer corner is to really blend and smudge. This isn't gonna be a soft blending brush for overall color. This is really gonna be for smudging. And you, you do want to, when you apply color, you wanna use a light hand because if you apply color too concentrated, then it's gonna be hard to blend out with this particular brush. So you always wanna add layers. You don't wanna to go too hard in the beginning. Next is the 934. I believe this is a precise contour. I don't feel like it's that precise. The reason why it's precise is because it's slightly pointed instead of rounded. I'm gonna compare this to the Morphe oh, wow. M421. I felt like this was just kind of more of a regular contour. Uh, excuse me, an under eye concealer, but we use this for if she wanted to imply synthetic like shimmer colors or cream across her eyelid like this, but we definitely got it for oh. under eye concealer. So she needed an under eye concealer, but we got more of a pointed shape so that she can um, have more precision if she needs to. This is really great for if you want to carve out, clean up underneath the lips if you want oh. that really sharp lip line. Now this is very interesting. This is the Cassetti S185. This is their mini feather brush. It is so mini. <laughs> this isn't like any brush I've seen before because it is nice and fluffy on top, but it is rather dense. So this isn't like a mini, just a soft blending brush. Like what can I compare this to? For example, I have the Luxie 237. So they're almost the same, but you can see that the Cassetti is much more concentrated. The only thing I can liken this to, and I've never come across a brush like this, this is my Laneige brush. The great thing about this is it's so narrow, it's so skinny. Yeah. Let's compare this to, I mean, it's even smaller than this, the brush head. Just for comparison, this is the Delium pencil. So it's very skinny and um, it's going to be dense enough where it puts enough color in the crease, but this fluffiness is going to be able to help you diffuse it out. So if Charlotte oh. closes her eyes, it can get right into here, but if she opens, get right in here and it doesn't spread too far out. Because with traditional blending brushes, I don't have one, but I mean, this Sephora one is pretty petite, but like if I were to smudge, see how high the color goes? And this one just goes in right in there. And, wow. one, and it's so dense that it can e even go, we can even go above her. Wow. Look, it just like created that's, a second crease amazing. right there. So this is a great brush. Based on the website, it's one of the best sellers. So I think this is a very unique brush. So I was wow. telling the girls earlier that um, I don't think that there's one perfect brush brand. I do love me some Smith Cosmetics brushes, but now that I've set my foundation of brushes in my personal and my pro kit, I'm always on the hunt, not on the hunt, but I'm always, I always have an eye open for unique brushes. And so this is one of those unique brushes where you're not gonna find it in a lot of lines um, and it has a very specific purpose. Doesn't mean you have to have it, no, but especially for someone with petite eyelids, I would say that this would be a great blending brush for you. Next we have the so Makeup Forever 206 Straight. This is going to be a synthetic, I think it's a concealer or a lip brush. I'm gonna compare this to, gosh, I don't even have any of my actual, I'll just show you for comparison. This is a Bobbi Brown smudger brush on your right. 
In the middle is going to be a concealer brush from Bare Essentials from way, way, way back when. So it's going to be a precision brush. We got this for her as a point conceal for concealing on the face, but we also got it if she wants to put in um, cream color, if she wants to smudge, it can also do that. It's not as dense as a smudger brush because it is kind of soft, but it's, and then also it's really tiny, but if you wanted to do precision lips, that's gonna get right in here and help you color. So this is going to be, I would say, more, more often than not, probably for concealer. Last but not least, one of my favorite brushes of all time is going to be the Anastasia 7B. It's spoolie on one side, the perfect synthetic and dense angle brush. It's so thin, so if you want to go in and cr create, truly create hair-like strokes with the softest touch, you need a really soft touch, you can create oh. hair-like strokes. If you want a super cut, baddie Instagram eyebrow, you can go <laughs> in with your pomade and really carve it out. The spoolie is like petite and dense enough where you can go in and comb up the brows. Another thing for spoolies besides brushing is when you put too much brow uh, product, it can be any type. You can actually take this against your skin and lightly take some of that color out. So wow. that is it. Yeah. All your brushes. My makeup oh, tutorial <laughs> and some yummy cake and the very delicious tea. <laughs>